In the time it takes to watch this video, you're going to become an expert at using VLOOKUP in Google Sheets. And by the end of it, you'll be able to sort and filter your data with ease so that you can take control of your spreadsheets and get your data working for you. Let's dive in. First of all, we're going to quickly run through what VLOOKUP is used for and how it might help you. And then we're going to run through a couple of examples so that you can see step by step exactly how this function works and how you can apply it to your own data. Follow along with our instructions. You can click the links below to find the data sets that we have used in these examples, meaning that you can check back on them at any point if you need a reminder of how it all works. OK, let's get started. What is VLOOKUP? Let's first take a look at what the VLOOKUP function is. Well, VLOOKUP actually stands for Vertical Lookup. It's a standard function within Google Sheets that scours your spreadsheet vertically to find a specific piece of data. Or to put it a simpler way, it is a formula which can find the information that you're looking for. It will scan the information which can then be cross-referenced or displayed with some other data. Using VLOOKUP, you can find that information immediately without having to manually scan through all of the data, so it can save you a lot of time. It can seem quite a daunting function to use though, as when you first look at the function, it can seem a bit complicated. There is a set syntax that is required for the function to work that you need to understand before you can use it. But it's a lot simpler than it looks. Here is the syntax. Now let's break it down piece by piece. The first parameter is the search key. This refers to the value that you're searching for. So for example, if you're searching for a particular order number, you enter the cell that contains that information here. After that, we enter the range. That's where we're going to be looking for the data, which will be two or more columns. The first column will always be the place where it looks for your search key. Then we're on to index, which is the column number that we want to extract data from. So for example, if you wanted the order value of each of the orders you selected in the search key, and this figure was in the next column, you would enter two as the information you want is in the second column. Finally, we have is sorted. This has to be either true or false, but most of the time it'll be false. You would only enter true if the first column in the range is sorted in ascending order. This would then return the closest match to your search key. If you, as in most cases, enter false here, the formula will only look for an exact match for your search key. If you're struggling a little bit to take that all in, don't worry. It will all start to fall in place now as we run through a couple of examples using our fictional commercial bakery. You can follow along with exactly what we're doing by using the data in the link below. Example one, imagine it's a stressful day in the office of our bakery as one of our customers, Asda, have been in touch to say that they haven't received a number of orders that they've placed. They have provided a list of order numbers so our team needs to get to the bottom of it and find out when each of them was shipped so that they can speak to the usually reliable courier company. Going through the huge list of orders would take too long so they decide to do a VLOOKUP to get the date that each of these orders were shipped. Let's help them out. First of all we're going to create a new sheet called missing orders so that we keep all the information in a neat clear place. VLOOKUP works between different sheets. The first step is to enter each of the orders that our customer has claimed are missing in the first column. And we'll add a status column and mark them all as not received. Now we need to add a column for the date that they were shipped and create a VLOOKUP to enter that data. To do this, first we'll add equals VLOOKUP into cell C3 and open brackets to activate the function. The search key in this instance is the order number. That's the value that we need to look up we need the information that's attributed to this order number. That information is in cell A2 on this sheet, so we can type in A2 or just click on the cell we want to use. Next, we need the range of cells that hold the information that we need. For that, we can head over to the bakery sheet and highlight the columns that we want to include. We only really need the date ship column, but it doesn't hurt to select them all. As long as the order number column is the first one, that's all that matters. Next, we need to enter the index the column that we need the information from. In this case, it's the date shipped column. That is the fourth column along, so we just need to type the number four here. Finally, the data isn't sorted, so we'll add false at the end of our formula. Now our formula reads equals VLOOKUP, A2 for our search key, and then we're looking at the bakery sales tab from columns A to F, 
and we're looking at the fourth index and our data is not sorted, so we've input false as our fourth parameter. Then we can hit enter, and all of a sudden, the date the order was shipped will appear in the correct cell. To fill this formula down the column, we just need to drag the square in the bottom right of the cell. This will automatically fill it where we need. We now have all the data we need for an argument with the courier company. For our second example, let's imagine our bakery wants to add a little bit more detail to their spreadsheet. They have the quantity of each order, but not the value. Rather than going down and working out each one for each individual product, they can do a VLOOKUP to automatically work out the value of each order based on the price of the product that has been ordered. To illustrate how to do this, we have created a new sheet called With Product Prices. But they wouldn't need to do this, they could just add this to the existing sheet. As you can see, we've added a small table with the prices of each product next to our main table. This is going to be our range that we're going to use to add information into our spreadsheet. So let's create a couple of extra columns. First, a column that will display the unit price, and then one with the order value. Now we need to populate the unit price column with the VLOOKUP formula. So we'll start with equals VLOOKUP and open our brackets. We then need to select our search key, which for this one will be our product. That's the key bit of information for which we need to get the price. So we'll select cell B2. Next, we need the range. So we'll select all the data in our little table at the side, cells J3 to K9. Then we'll enter the number two, as we want the information in the second column of our range, the unit price. Finally, we need to finish with false and hit enter, and our unit price will magically appear. From here, we're on easy street. We just fill down so the formula goes to the bottom of our data. And to fill the order value column, we need a simple formula, equals F2 times E2 or quantity purchased multiplied by unit price to give our order value. Fill that one to the bottom and we have got the value of every order in a matter of seconds. It's as easy as that. But there are a few things to consider when using VLOOKUP. As you can see, using the VLOOKUP formula is in no way as complicated as it might first appear. Once you break it down into each section, it's really quite straightforward. But there are a few things that you should consider. Firstly, if the formula goes wrong and highlights a value error, first check to make sure that you have is sorted as false. Another common mistake is forgetting to enter the index number, which is the column within your range that you want to extract the data from. Another thing to note is that in Google Sheets, the VLOOKUP formula is case insensitive, so it doesn't distinguish between upper and lowercase characters. Something to bear in mind, particularly if you use both upper and lowercase for order numbers, for example. Finally, if you get the NA error, double check the search range as this might be where you have an error. Maybe you have added a column since you created the formula which has sent it all out of sync. We hope we have given you everything you need to start adding VLOOKUP formulas to your data in order to save yourself a lot of time and hassle. There are so many possibilities when you know how to use VLOOKUP. We are sure you will find plenty of opportunities to use this new skill. Please leave any comments below especially if you have any areas of Google Sheets you would like us to cover in the future. And please do like the video if you found it helpful. Thank you again for watching. See you in our next video.